A language is designed to communicate ideas. But before it can communicate, a sentence has to be recognized. This means one thing if it's in English, and another if it's in French. One decision problem for formal languages is a given string an element of the language. For example, let's consider the language described by is this thing an element of L, or what about this thing? So note that our language consists of strings consisting of any number of zero ones and any sequence of ones. So one way we might be able to decide whether a string is part of a language is to see if we can construct it. So we can construct this string by... So it's an element of L. But if you don't see the construction, is it because no construction exists, or you're just not clever enough? Well, let's consider. This string has two consecutive zeros. But in our language, a zero is always followed by a one. So this string can't be an element of the language. As the example shows, finding constructions or proving no construction exists is one way we could decide if a string is an element of a language, but it's generally not practical. It requires creativity, and you can't program creativity. We want an algorithm. And the key to understanding algorithms, algorithms have decisions, but no choices. So let's consider. Imagine we have some string x and want to decide if it's an element of a regular language. We can go through our string element by element, and the regular expression defining the language limits the possibilities for which elements can follow any given element. So one of two things will happen. We'll be able to reach the end of the string following the rules, or we'll come to a symbol that can't be produced by the regular expression. For example, let's consider an arithmetic expression like, we can evaluate this expression by examining it symbol by symbol and making a sequence of decisions of what to do next. This is very easy for a human being to do, but as we'll see, it's a very complicated process to try and describe algorithmically. In fact, as we'll see, this is not a regular expression. So let's consider a simpler expression, like this is a sequence of instructions and we can follow them to arrive at some destination. Or can we? Here's the important thing to realize. If two people follow the same instructions, they will not end in the same place. Where they are will depend on their initial state, in this case, where they are located and what direction they're facing. If you're on the west side of a highway facing north, following these instructions might take you to a party. But if you're on the east side of the highway facing north, following these instructions might take you to a hospital. And in general, after each instruction, a person will be in a new state that describes where they are and what direction they face. We can represent this process using a state diagram that shows our current state and which state we'll go to based on certain events. No, I don't mean like that, but maybe more something like this. And so, where do we end up with the string 1011 and then find a string that takes you to end? So from begin, we go to P. The first symbol of our string is 1, which takes us to R. You can think about this as the first instruction of our trip. The next symbol is 0, which takes us to Q. The next symbol is 1, which also takes us to Q. And the last symbol also takes us to Q. And notice that we're stuck at this point. 
We have no further symbols to process, so we can't move from Q. We could represent our path through the state diagram as follows. So if we begin, we went to P, and since the first symbol was 1, we took the path to R. The next symbol was 0, which took us to Q. 1 takes us to Q, and then 1 takes us to Q. Now suppose we want to get to end. One possible path is P to R to end. And we could get from P to R if our first symbol is 1. And we can get from R to end if our next symbol is 1. So 1, 1 is a string that will take us to end.